Um, so now that we've de uh, deposited our silicon dioxide uh, with the PECVD, um, we're going to measure the thickness of the deposited oxide uh, with uh, our ellipsometer, which is the Woolam um, M2000 uh, DPUV, okay, um, which we see here. Uh, so let's uh, turn on the machine. Okay. This we do with the three switches on the bottom. Okay, one, two, three. Um, and uh, we will then load the uh, analysis program, which is called uh, WVASE32. Okay. Um, and the first thing, I have a seat. Um, the first thing we have to do is initialize the hardware. Um, one thing that we, uh, that we notice is that there's lots of windows. Right, let's maximize this. Um, we see that there's lots of windows in the main window. Um, there should be uh, six windows. Um, if we see that one of the windows is missing, um, we can... Wait, let's see if we can get this down a little bit. No. Um, if we see that one of the windows is missing, we can just go to Window um, and then click on the window that's missing. Like if I, for instance, close um, the hardware window, I can click on Window and Hardware and it'll show up again. Okay? Um, so the first thing we always have to do is initialize the hardware. Okay? Um, the different windows have different menus. So if I click on Hardware, we can see that there are, um, there are um, a number of uh, different menus. If I click on, for instance, the Fit window, then the menus change. Okay? So let's go back to the hardware menu, or the, har the hardware window. We're going to be in the hardware window for um, at least several minutes. Okay? So first thing we do is initialize the hardware, and we click Initialize. Okay? Okay. Um, it asks us for a username. This doesn't um, have that much significance, but my name is in there already. Okay. Um, now I'm going to place uh, the wafer on the stage. This is a motorized stage. Okay. Um, you can see the wafer with the um, colored uh, silicon dioxide. Okay. You can already, if you're familiar with um, uh, silicon wafers and silicon dioxide, you can uh, normally tell simply by the color um, what the thickness uh, is of the deposited layer. Okay? And this is uh, green to purple. Okay? Um, so we're going to place the wafer. Um, between the pins, there are two pins um, for aligning the wafer in the center. Okay? Um, and then we're going to um, um, we're going to turn on the vacuum, the system vacuum. Okay, and this should hold the wafer in place. Okay. Um, now, before we begin, um, we can make sure that the translator, uh, the translator would be the uh, the motorized stage and um, all of the micrometers which are attached to the stage. Um, we can make sure that the translator is oriented and, uh, and also located in the appropriate location and the appropriate angle. Um, if not, then the, the, um, the adjustments that we're going to have to make to the angle of the, um, of the stage uh, will be a little bit more difficult to uh, appropriately um, perform. Okay? So let's go to, uh, we're still in the hardware menu, okay? And we'll be in the hardware menu until I, um, until I, 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 I mention that we're going to be going to a different window. Okay, so let's go to Move, Translator, and we're going to click on Home Stages, okay? And we can see that the stage is rotating. Um, the translator might also move in the X and Y position, okay? So, we were actually um, um, in the appropriate location, but it's a good idea to make sure of that. Okay. So now um, we are going to um, level the wafer, um, and we are then going to scan the wafer with uh, um, with uh, our with our multi wavelength um, uh, light sources. Okay. Um, so now we're going to uh, do several things at once, and it's going to be iterative. Okay? Once we change the position, we're going to 
um, adjust the, the Z position, and then, um, um, sorry, we're going to adjust the angle of the tilt of the, of the stage, and then adjust the Z position, and we're going to do that iteratively, um, iteratively. Okay? So, let's go to acquired, acquired data. Okay, and we have um, the align sample option. Um, if we click align sample without holding the shift button, then this will initiate um, uh, the, or this will initialize the laser. Um, the laser is simply a laser pointer for finding the center of um, the beam spot, which we will, um, uh, from our light sources. Um, for a large wafer, we actually don't need to do that because our sample is um, large enough that we will be located somewhere in the center. For small samples, it's actually a good idea um, to uh, initialize the laser, um, the laser pointer at the top. So that would be um, clicking align sample. We'll do that now just, uh, just for fun. Uh, we click align sample, okay? And we can see that we, um, our hardware window um, has changed somewhat. We see these, these large bars, okay, which is the um, uh, the amplitude um, of the, um, this is of the laser spot, okay? Um, now, what we would do is that we would, um, with the laser uh, initialized, um, we would then look at the beam spot um, on the wafer, um, and if it's difficult to see, we can then take a slide. Uh, we should have a slide somewhere. Okay? Um, sometimes it's difficult to see um, where, the, where the laser beam is falling on the sample. Um, so then we can just take a slide, it doesn't matter, it's actually better if the slide is a little bit dirty. Um, and we just place the slide um, in the path of the beam, okay, and we can see where it's generally falling. And then we would uh, change the position of the wafer accordingly, or of the sample accordingly, okay? But again, we're working with wafers. Um, so it doesn't um, actually make that much of a difference. Um, we're going to escape um, out of this. You can see on the screen it says escape exits. So we'll place escape, and then we're going to perform our tilt adjustment. Okay, so we press escape. Um, and it says uh, adjust the height of the micrometer um, to center the beam um, in the output aperture. The output aperture is uh, located in this arm. Um, so we're going to do that. Again, that's part of the iterative operations that we're going to be doing right now. Okay. So we press OK. Um, and now we're going to go to um, Acquire Data and Align Sample, but this time we're going we're to hold the Shift button or the Shift key and click Align Sample. Okay. Um, and now we're not, um, uh, we're not um, initializing the laser. We're, we're initializing um, the light sources um, and collecting uh, the reflected light um, in, the, um, in the output arm, okay, or on the sensor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look um, inside, um, inside the output arm, okay, um, and there's a little black dot. It's going to be, you're not going to be able to see this. Maybe this is something that we can image later. Um, and I'm going to adjust the position of the, um, of the spot, which is reflected off of the wafer, so that it's roughly aligned to the center um, of the black um, of the black dot, the black dot would be uh, would be um, would be the optical sensor. Okay, so now I look in and I see that we are a little bit low. So now I adjust the Z position with the Z micrometer. Okay, and now I just rotate the micrometer um, until I, it looks like a halo. Until the halo of light, which is reflected off the wafer, is um, is uh, centered on the black dot on the inside. Okay. Um, let's uh, maybe maximize this window, okay? Um, now, what we're going to do is we're, uh, we're going to center the, the wafer or center this, um, this red cross in the center of the screen and we'll, um, we'll, we'll judge the, uh, the accuracy of our, of our centering by the values of X and Y, okay? Um, so now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these two um, adjustment screws, okay, to raise and lower um, the the sides of the stage, okay, um, and they're roughly um, um, uh, they roughly give us the X and Y positioning 
of the uh, of the red cross. And what we'll see that if I adjust one, it's more or less uh, adjusting the the cross in the x direction. If I adjust the other, it's more or less adjusting the cross in the y direction. But there is coupling between them, so we're going to have to do this. Um, again, iteratively, and as we change the, the tilt of the stage, we're going to adjust the Z position so that the halo of light is again centered in, um, on the sensor. Okay, so let's start adjusting our tilt. Okay, now I'm changing okay, the X position okay, with, uh, with that adjustment screw, and now I need to, to adjust the Y Okay, with that adjustment screw. And now I go back to X. Okay, I think I, I need to lower it somewhat. Bring it back. Okay, what we, um, what we want to see is that, um, that, the, um, the, um, that the tolerance is between um, plus and minus one in the X and Y direction. Okay, so now I'm going to look in the arm again at the sensor, adjust the, um, adjust the Z position, and uh, you can see that as I adjust the Z position, I also alter um, the position of, of the cross, which needs then to be brought back. Again, this is an iterative process, it just takes about a minute. Okay. Okay, um, I can see that I'm just about at plus or minus one. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, um, so we're going to escape, um, and even though we're a little bit above the the plus or minus one, um, it's not um, too much above. So we're going to escape and continue anyway. Okay. Good. So um, I hit the escape key. I'm going to um, uh, minimize or shrink the window. Okay. Um, and now, what we're going to do is we're going to scan. Um, um, we're going to scan the wafer, okay? And um, to 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 perform the measurement, we go back. To, we're still again in the hardware uh, window. We go to the acquired data menu, okay? And then we uh, click on spectroscopic scan, okay? Um, and that pulls up a new window. Now this is the spe this is the the vase scan window. Um, and we have um, a number of options, okay? Uh, first, at the top, we can select uh, the appropriate wavelength. Um, there are certain materials uh, which, um, which will um, absorb um, above or below a certain wavelength. Um, and, um, and then we can, um, um, that would uh, then lead to uh, um, a measurement which is, which is not very accurate. Um, we can then select. We can then deselect those wavelengths that are not appropriate for the particular material, okay? Um, so that the measurement will um, um, will then be able to fit to the model, okay? So I click on the wavelength select button, and you can see that currently all of the wavelengths um, from deep UV, right, which is uh, about 190, um, all the way to um, almost a thousand nanometers are selected. If I wanted to uh, deselect some wavelengths, um, I could, for instance, put in um, a new starting wavelength, let's say 300, and scan up until 900, okay? And then I would click Select Range, okay? And you can see that I've deselected nine, um, the wavelengths above 900 and below 300, okay? And we're actually gonna leave it like this. Right, and now I'm going to click OK. OK. Um, so the other options we have are to scan multiple angles. Um, 70 degrees is a pretty typical uh, measurement angle. Um, 
we often uh, scan on uh, three angles, uh, 65, 70, and 75, okay? Um, and uh, we then, um, inc we then um, increase by five degrees uh, from scan to scan. Again, this is, uh, this is fairly standard here. Um, and we can also um, change our revolutions per measurement, rev uh, revolutions of the polarizer. Um, the more revolutions per measurement um, that you use, uh, this will then um, increase uh, the amount of data, but then also um, perhaps increase the accuracy um, of the measurement. Okay, um, but for uh, um, for um, fast measurements, we're we're actually going to use um, um, ten measure ten revolutions per measurement. Okay, and then we're going to click OK. Um, and once I click OK, we're going to start the measurement. Um, the the angle of the um, the angle of the arms will change. We'll then measure at three angles, um, and then we're going to try to fit the data to the measurement. Okay, so let's start that. Okay. Um, it asked me if I want to save the experimental data. I do want to save the experimental data. Okay, let's find my folder. Okay, this is PCVD, and this will be three microns. Okay, so let's click save. Um, you can enter a comment if it's um, if there's a pertinent comment that you want to make. We're not going to. Okay, um, so now um, what we're going to do is it's actually we've lost the tops of these um, uh, of the uh, of the menus. Um, you can see that this one is just uh, showing us. I actually don't know. Here. Ah, okay. Um, I just reset the menu layout so that we can see the tops of all of the menus, okay? Um, okay, this is pretty typical for our layout, okay? Um, so now what we're going to do is um, we are going to uh, go to the model window, okay? And we're going to start um, adding our layers. Um, the layers that we have um, in this case are silicon and silicon dioxide. Okay, so let's add the first, uh, the first layer, and we build, we build the stack of layers um, from the bottom up. Okay, so let's do that again. I go to the model window, I click on add layer, and I find the appropriate layer. In this case, it would be silicon. Um, silicon JAW is an appropriate um, model um, for the material, uh, for the silicon um, wafer. Okay, so let's click OK. Um, now, when I click OK, it pulls up um, another window, and um, the silicon wafer we're not going to fit. We're, all, we're only going to fit um, the uh, deposited layer. So um, the default is one millimeter. This is fine. Um, it's, uh, it's not going to affect the measurement at all. So we're just going to click OK and continue on to the silicon dioxide layer. Okay? So we can see that we've just added um, our, uh, our substrate, which is uh, the silicon substrate. The thickness that we gave it was one millimeter, um, and it's the text is in black. Um, if the text were in blue, then this would be some. This would be a. This would be a material that we're going to fit um, to the data. Okay, but we're not fitting the the silicon, um, the silicon wafer to the data. We to the measured data. Um, we're going to we're going to fit the next layer, which is silicon dioxide. Okay, so let's add the next layer. We go to add layer. Okay, and just as before. Um, we find uh, SiO2, um, and this uh, we're also going to use SiO2 JAW. Okay, we click OK, um, and now we want to. Now we are going to fit, okay, the data. So we're going to click fit, and we're going to give it an initial guess for thickness. Okay, so and you can see that the units are angstroms, right? So we're going to guess thirty thousand. Okay, which uh, is approximately what we have. Okay, um, there are other optical constants, um, n and k, which is um, the um, um, the angle of refraction, um, as w and the um, uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the coefficient, um, or I'm sorry, the refractive index, sorry, um, and also k, which is the um, which is the absorb uh, absorption coefficient, 
Okay, um, we are not going to initially check these. Okay, um, if the um, if the model is good enough, and what we um, and what we learn when we start uh, doing ellipsometry is that it really all depends on the um, the uh, um, the quality of the model. Um, if the model is good, then we should actually be able to um, to get a good fit uh, simply with the thickness. Um, and, and then we can, um, if we if we get a good fit, then we can um, we can output the optical constants n and k um, from the um, from the uh, from the fit data, and then this can um, uh, and that can um, be something that we could use um, if we want to. Uh, we can also um, add n and k um, if we want to. Um, if the fit is not quite good, um, and then this will then get us even closer to uh, to a good fit. Okay, but again, um, from with ellipsometry, it's uh, really based on the quality of the model. Um, and um, however, one has to be careful um, because uh, if we're playing with too many constants um, or too many parameters, then it can actually um, f it can give us uh, in, um, it can give us uh, um, fit information or uh, that is inappropriate. Um, it will fit the data that you ask it to, um, but sometimes it can actually give you uh, fictitious. Um, data, so one has to be careful, um, and one also has to to use appropriate models and models with, that are of high quality. Okay, so um, we are not going to use any other constants except for the except for the thickness, and then we're going to click OK. Okay, so now we see in the um, in the model window we have two materials, silicon and silicon dioxide. Um, the silicon dioxide we've guessed is about three microns or three, thirty thousand angstroms. Um, okay, and now to see, let's uh, actually make this window bigger. We can see how close we are um, to the uh, to an, an, an appropriate fit of the model by clicking on the generated data window, and then by clicking generate data. Okay, and um, you can see uh, already that we are um, v in very very good agreement. Okay, um, to uh, three microns. Okay, and how do I know that? Well, the, the generated data that we saw before was in blue and green. Um, and these are simply parameters of, um, um, of the, um, uh, these are coefficients of how the um, light changes with respect to polarization of the light going through the material. So, and those, those parameters are psi and delta. Um, and uh, one can then use those um, parameters in, to find um, uh, to find the uh, characteristics of the material. Um, uh, however, it's simply the way that the polarized light changes as it as it reflects or as it um, goes through the material and then reflects off the the substrate. Okay, but what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the um, the generated uh, the generated model data, which is in red, and we can see that the red generated model data um, follows the uh, experimental data very well. Okay, you can see that it's very, very close. Okay, and this is obviously what we want. Um, now we can see how close we are to, uh, um, uh, to, the, um, to the experimental data. Okay, um, and now we're going to do a, a data fit. Okay, so we're going to click on the fit window. Okay, um, and we're going to click on edit parameters, the edit parms. Um, and now we see that we pulled up another window, and if we had more parameters rather than just thickness, we would have um, the um, a fit parameter for thickness, and then um, um, index of refraction, or um, also the coefficient um, of, of absorption. Um, however, uh, we don't, we didn't, we didn't check those boxes, so we we only see the thickness value. Okay. Um, and now we're going to um, again give a range of thicknesses which we wanted to um, to use uh, for guessing. So let's um, input um, 29,000 angstroms and maybe 31,000 angstroms. Okay. And now we're going to change the number of um, guesses. Give it 100 guesses. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll change the number of iterations to 10. Okay, every time we change the parameters um, in, the, um, in the fit parameters window, we need to then um, click change selected parameters. And we'll see that reflected in this line of the parameter. Okay, so let's click change selected parameters. Okay, and we see that now we've changed 
the range of thicknesses which is going to use to try to fit um, the thickness of the material. Okay, and we and we've also changed the number of global gases. Okay, um, now if we want to start um, the uh, the fit, we could click on global fit. Okay. And that would then um, start the, the fitting process. Um, however, I'm going to um, show a little trick for um, increasing the speed, um, which is something that can be used if we want to just very quickly get, um, get a sense of um, the appropriateness of the, of the, um, um, of the, data, of the uh, model data to the experimental data. So I'm actually going to click X. I'm going to close this window. And I'm going to go to the experimental data window. Okay, this is the first time we've clicked on the experimental data window. Um, now, if I go to range select, the range select menu, I hope you can see this behind the, uh, behind the machine, I click on range select, and I can skip every two data points. Okay, um, if I skip every two data points, then the, um, the, the fitting will actually move along much faster. Okay, so let's click OK. And this is simply, but if we, if we have time, um, to, um, to sit and, um, and do um, a much longer fit, and that's something that um, we don't want to do because it's about accuracy. If we skip every two, we'll get a slightly less accurate um, fit. Okay, but let's, uh, let's do skip every two data points. Okay, I clicked OK. Let's go back to the fit window, okay, and go back to the edit parameters menu. Okay, and now I can click on global fit. Okay, um, and we can see that the um, that the uh, in the fit window, um, the mean square error, which is um, which is uh, the um, the the error um, or the the statistical error between um, the generated data, the model data, and the experimental data. Okay, um, so we see that in parentheses uh, we see the results already of our um, of our fit. Um, so the mean square error um, of the fit is 45, which is actually fairly good because we're using three angles. If we used um, only one angle, you know, angle of the um, of the of the arms, um, then uh, we would actually get a lower MSE because we would have um, less data to fit. Okay. Um, I can also see in the um, in the graph window. Okay. Um, that uh, below, oh, about 350 nanometers, um, there seems to be some areas which are um, not really close to fitting, um, and this is um, and, and this is something that we could um, actually remove from the data if we began um, with um, uh, with the initial uh, spectroscopic scan, um, starting from 350 nanometers rather than 300 nanometers. Okay. Um, and then we wouldn't have this peak, and then the, M and then the mean square error um, and the fit would actually be probably um, a little bit uh, closer. However, this is a, this is a very good result. Um, we would say that uh, an error of less than 50 um, would be completely uh, acceptable. Okay? Um, and we can also see the, um, the result um, of the, the fit for the thickness parameter. Okay? And you can see that the, the final, um, the final uh, result is um, 2 microns um, in 2.9976 um, microns, right? or 29,976 angstroms. Um, so this is um, uh, less than, um, this is about 25 angstroms um, uh, different from the uh, expected value. Okay, so this is also very good. Two, um, several na that's several nanometers. Several nanometers error is completely acceptable. Okay, for our, um, particularly for our case where we're just um, using this material um, for an etch mask. Okay, this is an etch mask of the of the silicon handle wafer of our of our SOI wafer. Okay, um, but once we finish the global fit, we're going to click on normal fit. Okay, and it's going to then. Um, it, if there's no other uh, change to the data, then it's going to um, um, give us a, a, final, um, uh, a final set of parameters for our fit. And you can see that the MSE, the mean square, is about 45. Um, and there's a value of thickness, which, is, uh, which has um, an error of um, 2.3 um, angstroms. Um, uh, however, uh, we're well within the realm of acceptability. Um, uh, for, our uh, for our deposited layer. Um, if we wanted to get even closer, 
um, to uh, three microns to exactly three microns, then we would increase the the deposition time in our um, of our uh, PECVD uh, deposition um, by you know, just several seconds, and then we would get an increase of several nanometers. Okay, um, so. Uh, we can then save our data. Okay, we're going to um, um, if we w if we have a model which we are uh, adjusting or changing to um, to suit the uh, the appropriate layer, then we could save our model data um, under a new name, of course, um, and then we could use it um, in the future. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to sit. We're going to save um, our um, our uh, generated data. Okay, by clicking on the generated data window, and by clicking file and then save gen file. Okay, so we are going to. Uh, okay, enter in three microns zero zero one, and we're going to call this gen. Okay, we're going to click OK. Um, we can also um, export our results uh, to um, uh, a text file. Um, or to uh, you know, and also to Excel. Um, if we click on uh, the the fit window, um, we can then copy this to clipboard. Okay, so we click on the fit window, and we click file and copy to clipboard. Now, if we if we had um, checked our values of n and k, um, uh, the index of refraction and, and absorption, um, we would then have uh, values of those parameters. Um, per wavelength, and this would be a long list of values per wavelength. Um, we could then copy those into Excel, and we could then um, plot them. Okay, but because we only measure thickness, um, the copy data will only give us these values. Okay. Um, however, we could go to Excel, which we have here, and we do a Control V. Okay, and you can see the values of thickness and mean square error. However, again, like I said, if we also had values of n and k, we would then have those values per wavelength, um, and so we would have a long list of of wavelengths and then the um, columns for n and k, which uh, um, um, for each wavelength. Okay, so now we're gonna save this. You can save this and. This is SiO2, P is CVD, 3 microns. OK, we save this file. OK, um, so we have um, verified that the, um, that the thickness of the deposited layer um, is uh, 3 microns, or two, um, 3 microns less um, 2.5 nanometers, which is uh, Fairly close, um, and now we can shut down the uh, the program. Okay, and we're just going to do that by xing out of the program. Okay, exit W base program. Yes. Okay, um, and now we're going to um, turn off the um, the the machine. Um, we turned it on from the bottom up, and now we're going to turn it off from the top down. Okay, so. We turn off the um, uh, the power supply, okay. Um, and now the the middle button is lamp ignition. It's already ignited. We've already been using the lamps, so we don't need to turn off the we don't need to turn off lamp ignition. We turn off the last button, okay. We can turn off our vacuum and remove the sample from the stage. <laughs>